NBA TV host Rick uh, Camelo with me here. Always enjoy watching the guys on NBA TV break it down and tune into NBA TV's Game Time for comprehensive pre- and post-game playoff coverage every night through the NBA Finals. That's where I am after the games, and I will be there tonight for Golden State. And, of course, Oklahoma City as Rick. We welcome you aboard. How are you, pal? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm actually about to take a nap so that uh, so that I'm able to stay up late uh, tonight, watch the game, and then watch the post-game presser. You got the West Coast uh, Finals tonight. Uh, we got Oklahoma City pulling off a little bit of an upset, but they were do- able to do something, Rick, that they didn't that that didn't happen, uh, but one time in the regular season. San Antonio lost one game at home, but they lost twice in a week at home. Can something similar happen tonight? Can Oklahoma City legitimately win again in Oakland? Yes, and it wouldn't surprise me because how do you beat San Antonio on the road? How do you take out the 67-win Spurs? You you play every possession like your hair is on fire and like, uh, uh, like a legacy is on the line. And I don't think this is about keeping KD in Oklahoma City. I think this is about Russ and KD feel like they should already have a ring they don't. They've been buzz killed by injuries. The one that was cut short with Westbrook's uh, knee injury, the conne- the collision with Beverly, uh, Kevin Durant missed a playoff run with the Jones fracture. Serge Ibaka, if you remember, a couple of years ago uh, in-, in Game Six as they're closing out the Clippers, he pops a calf muscle, and then they get run by by San Antonio. They're healthy. They're hungry. They're thirsty. They're super talented. They're big. Uh, uh, they're playing with force right now. Stephen Adams is a sledgehammer down low. Uh, Cantor is making his money. He got a huge contract in the offseason. Uh, but the bottom line is you have two guys that aren't just future Hall of Famers. They're all-time greats. Kevin Durant is one of the best to ever play his position. Westbrook is one of the best to ever play his his position. And they're just real nasty and feisty and hungry right now. And uh, I saw a hungrier team, uh, a hungrier Thunder team in game one than the Dubs. That won't be the case tonight because the Dubs, I'm sure, realize this is a death game. Yeah, Rick, and uh, we saw the Warriors. And it's funny because the Warriors are a historically great team in terms of record. And normally the team that is the best is the villain. And it seems that everybody likes this team. And you wonder if... You know, they got so much attention. I kind of liken them to the Patriots losing to the Giants in the Super Bowl. Like, it, would it be a surprise? Would it be a shock if they got knocked off? And it sounds like you don't think so because this Thunder team feels like no one's paid attention to them, and they are pretty damn good. Yeah, I mean, 55 wins in the regular season. But, you, you know, you watch NBA TV. The conversation all year has been the collision course that San Antonio and Golden State is on. And we don't cook this stuff up. We just react to what we're seeing and, and the stories that, that are being played out on the court. And obviously in the East, it's Cleveland against everybody. You could literally create an all-star team of every other team in the Eastern Conference, and I'm still not sure they would beat the Cavaliers the way they're playing right now. So and, and the, the Warriors are not just swashbuckling through this thing thinking, we got this. Trust me, there's some serious soul-searching going on right now with those guys. Not a lack of confidence, but a how in the hell are we going to beat the Thunder? Because the Thunder have their full attention. Think about it. They win 73 games the most all time, and with one loss in game one, they give away all 73 (laughs) wins and home court advantage to OKC. Uh, It is funny when you say it like that, and then you think about it, the Warriors weren't really pressed uh, by Houston in round one, a little bit by Portland in round two, but this is a different animal in the Thunder. And a lot of people, Rick, wondered, was San Antonio the better matchup? Is that what people would have rather seen? Maybe Golden State put their guard down a little bit, knowing that they had beaten uh, Oklahoma City all three times and that not a lot of people gave Oklahoma City a lot of a chance. We're going to find out what uh, Golden State's made of tonight, though. Yeah, no doubt about it. Now, the San Antonio thing, um, I, you know, I watched all four regular season meetings between those teams every minute of every game. Uh, the Warriors kind of got San Antonio where they want them. I, I think it would have been probably a six-game series. Uh, it would have been some thrilling basketball for sure, but this is a better series. This is um, It's just a more talented team. I'm sorry. The big three is super, super aged. I think mm-hmm. it's time for Tim Duncan. Um, it, it, I love him. I'm not hating at all, but it's time to go. Uh, it's time for Paul Pierce to go. It's time for Kevin Garnett to go. Probably time for Mata Ginobili to go. And these are all first ballot Hall of Famers. I'm not trying to come out of the league. I'm just saying, when it's the end, it's the end. And I just feel like Tim Duncan does not have a whole lot to give 
Uh, he had a super pedestrian, like he had a Nene regular season. You know what I mean? Like like nine points, eight boards, you know, big deal. I'm totally sound asleep on that. Um, and he can't just like reach into his bag of tricks and channel like inner competitive greatness. It's just not there anymore. He's played 19 years. So this is, and it's ironic, right? All year long, we wanted, you know, Golden State, San Antonio in the West Finals. It was sort of preordained that that would happen. But, hey, things change. Um, Oklahoma City is, is puffy and super competent and, and coming for everybody's money. Look, I think it's a coin flip right now, a three-way coin flip, and I know that's odd. It's impossible. But Cleveland, OKC, and Golden State, I think all have about an equal chance of winning the championship. If I were an odds maker, it would be like, Golden State two to one, and, and OKC and Cleveland would be two and a half to one or three to one. I think it's that close. Yeah, it's and it's somewhere near there. And Toronto's forty to one uh, in the Vegas odds. Yeah. You can see Rick on Fridays game time with uh, Grant Hill and Dennis Scott. TNT's exclusive coverage of the Western Conference Finals tonight at eight o'clock. Game two, Warriors and Thunder. Let's look at the East. Uh, Andy shot for the forty to one shot. Toronto Raptors. Uh, I feel like they just you know game seven back to back series. Just not only that. They don't have the talent. I mean, they just don't. If it was Kyrie and Love versus DeRozan and Lowry, maybe. You throw LeBron in the mix, they got no one close. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a runaway for Cleveland, no doubt about it. If Jonas Valanciunas is healthy and playing, you know, so what, they lose last night by 21 instead of 31? I mean, I, I'm not hating on <laughs> Valanciunas. I like him. I, I actually thought, you know, in the Miami series, just when they started to figure out that he was rolling and ready to become a beast, boom, he blows out his ankle. Um, so, you know, if he can come back for game three or four, maybe. But it, it's not a good look when Toronto – and this has everything to do with Cleveland, by the way, and how well they're playing. They look like a championship group right now, uh, playing with love, playing with emotion, you know, playing with great talent. They're sharing the ball. Uh, all of the drama, all of the he said, he said of the regular season is gone. They're focused on one goal, winning a ring uh, for the city of Cleveland. Um, so I think I think Toronto could maybe maybe get one up there, but probably not because you see the look on Lowry, DeRozan, Damari, all these guys' faces in the second half when they're just getting absolutely blown out, and they have the thousand yard. I don't know how we're going to beat this team. Stare in the second half of game one. Yes, it's over. <laughs> Uh, Rick, the NBA draft lottery was last night, and here in the Delaware Valley, Sixer fans were rejoicing as if they won the NBA championship. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, the three-year process finally netted them the first overall pick. Uh, was last night a validation of some sorts? Was it uh, refreshing to see them finally get what they wanted, or does it piss you off that this team doesn't deserve to get the number one pick after what they've done? No, I mean, I, I don't I don't agree. I agree with a one-year tank. I don't agree with a five-year tank, uh, and I never will. Um, to me, Philadelphia should have hit the let's get back in it button well before they did. Uh, they went 10-72 and 72 last year. I guarantee you a lot of 76er fans completely tuned out on their team, uh, much like we're doing right now down here in Atlanta with the Braves. I want to cheer for a 90-win Braves team, even if I know there's a ceiling on them. You know, like back when, uh, before they blew the team up, you know, they were in the playoffs, they were in the wild card game, they were relevant. Well, they gutted it. Uh, their, their farm systems kick ass right now, but the product on the field is historically awful. They just fired their coach. Uh, uh, but sending him an email, letting him know uh, he had a one, one, one-way ticket back to Atlanta. Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping it was first class and not coach. That would be a super, oh, super disc. But, but for Philadelphia, look, they – I don't – and I, I respectfully disagree with this, okay? I love the NBA. I'm an employee of the NBA, so I don't want to sound like, like that guy. But I really think that a 25% chance to get the number one pick isn't enough. I think it should be 50. Um, so, yes, and with, with, with that theory put huh. out there, I am glad that Philadelphia got the number one overall pick. Uh, do you deserve it? You know, that's, that, that's some different language. I mean – should you have hit the lottery and went one of, one of these years? Yes. Uh, and, and to me, I think Ben Simmons is the pick. And I know, you know, you've got Okafor, you've got Noel, and they, they both kind of play the same position. But I think either Noel or Okafor uh, could come off the bench. And what I would do, I'd put Okafor at the five. I'd put Simmons at the four. I'd bring Erlens Noel off the bench behind both spots 
you got 96 minutes at the five and four. I'd basically split it up 32, 32, 32. And as you guys know up there, Nerlens Noel is an injury waiting to happen. You got uh, Okafor coming off a of surgery. Nobody can can say with any clarity that Joel Embiid is ever going to play an NBA game. So I would still take Ben Simmons. All right. Uh, hey, you know, uh, you're right. Uh, it's, it'll be interesting to see what they do with those three big guys. And what happens with Saric as well is still in limbo up here. Uh, although the news on Embiid seems to be getting better and better. He, he tweeted last night, hey, whoever the number one pick is, I'm joining you. So we'll see if he ever gets out on the floor. Uh, Rick Kamala from uh, NBA TV tonight will have recap of uh, – they'll have recap – uh, pre- and post-game play- playoff coverage of game number two of the Warriors and Thunder. Good stuff, Rick. We'll be watching you. All right, thanks. Call anytime. You got